Hey everyone, Melanie Minchinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Today I have a beautiful Christmas project for you with one of my favorite frame sets from Gina K Designs, Festive Frame. This is back in stock after being out for a while, so just in time for all your Christmas cards. And we're going to be doing a really cool direct to stamp technique to make these candy striped poinsettias. We're going to be using a coordinating image from my pressed flowers set, which has filler bold images for all of the images in the coordinating a year of flowers set. So just using the poinsettia from this set today. In addition to the festive frame and the pressed flower sets from Gina K Designs, you're also going to need some ink pads. So today I'm using the Gina K Dusty Rose, the Red Velvet, and then I'm going to be using the Charcoal Brown. This is just a little bit softer than the black, and I think it looks so pretty when you stamp it with those pine cones. We're going to need some acrylic blocks for doing our stamping. And I've got a Misty here today that I'm going to be using for this frame stamp. If you don't have the Misty though, you could use a 6x6 or this is the 4x6 block that Gina carries. Just got a little bit of cardstock here. I'm using the Coordinating Dusty Rose cardstock, the Pure Luxury. This is 4 and a quarter by 11 inches, scored at 5 and a half. And then we've got a mat that is four by five and a quarter inches that will fit that frame and leave this nice little edge around it. Then just some adhesive and the only embellishing that I'm doing today, I've got some of the Nouveau Crystal Drops so that you can make your own enamel drops. We're gonna accent those little berries and the inside of that flower. This is the Rhubarb Crumble, but you could also use the Autumn Red. And I just used one color on this card, but I think I'm going to do both because I really like how those two colors are gonna bring in the two that we are using on the inking for those poinsettias. So let's begin by getting our frame stamped. So I've already placed this inside my little misty window. Now when you put it on, when you have a big stamp like this, sometimes you can get little air bubbles right in the center part. And that's really easy to accidentally pick up ink when you are using your ink pad to go over that. So if you do have an air bubble, what I recommend is just peeling the edge away to let the air out and then press it down as you go back onto that stamp. As long as you keep down one side of it, it's not going to move. Then we don't need our magnets because this is such a large stamp. We're doing it right here on this mat. So I'm just gonna put it right into the corner there and we can check that and just see that it is lined up inside our mat like we want. If you're concerned that you have any residual ink on this from a previous stamping and you're trying to get that lined up, then one tip that I have for you is just to take a piece of acetate. This is just from another stamp set that I received and you can lay that right over it and then you don't have to worry about transferring any of the ink until you're ready to actually do your stamping. So let's go ahead and get this inked up in the charcoal brown. So I'm just going to go all over and I'm going to try to avoid that middle area, just so I'm not getting a lot of ink inside that oval window. So I'm trying to just place the stamp, or the ink pad rather, across a couple planes of the image. And I wanna make sure that I get all those little details. Okay. But the beauty of this is that if you do miss it, you can just re-stamp it and it'll be in the same spot so I'm just going to get the little hair that got on there and then just press the window closed. Press all over to really get those details there in the corner and then pull it away. So there we have our frame. So I'm gonna put this aside and now we're going to ink up our poinsettias to put in here. So I thought of them as candy stripe poinsettias and then I looked them up just to get some images for inspiration and they really are called candy stripes. So I love seeing these at the grocery store. They just look hand painted. So first we're going to ink them up with our lighter color which is the Dusty Rose. Make sure I have that good and inked up. And then I'm gonna take the Red Velvet and what I want to do is I'm just using this edge here and then just carefully just swiping this from the center outward on those leaves. 
So on poinsettias, they're not really petals, they're leaves. That's something that I learned a while ago when I was researching poinsettias. You can put them on the tips or wherever you want. You can also just place it over your white cardstock and that kind of helps you to see how much red you have on there and when it's how you want it. Forgot to mention that you'll need some little post-it notes or something to mask off the corners unless you want it to go over the edge and that can be kind of a cool look too. But I want this to be just nice and clean so you have that sharp edge on the border of the frame. And you don't want to go too close in or it's going to skip. So just put it just outside of that line. And then I'm looking for this very pointy leaf. It's pretty easy to find. If you've taken a few minutes to talk or you have to walk away from it like I did, you can just huff onto it to reactivate or re-moisten that ink. And then we're just going to hover over that and drop it down. and lift it up. And now you've got little red striped poinsettias in there. Now if you get off just a little bit so you can see a little bit of that white reveal, you might like that. But if you feel like you're off too much and you wanna fill that in a little bit, you can take a blender pen and just lift up a little bit of ink from that pad to fill in those white edges. So that's up to you, but that's just a little fix if that bothers you. I just always am trying to think of a way that I can keep going and use what I have without starting over. And then you could go in with the red too if you needed to. So let's do that other one. And this one is turned a different way. We want to get this masked here. So we just move our post-it notes. Make sure that you have that whole corner masked off and if you're concerned about transferring any red onto the pink you can stamp that off onto some scratch paper but since we're tone on tone here I'm not concerned about it since I already did my stamping and then I'm going to go back and take the red and just do just some little streaks and I'm a little clumsy today because I caught my finger yesterday so pardon me if I seem a little bit awkward having trouble with these pads. Whoop. All right. And so for this one, we have this kind of heart shape leaf over here. And so we're gonna turn it this way and I'm just gonna peek over and get all those little details lined up and drop it down. Press all over and lift it up. Okay, now if you want, I have a little filler image if you want to do that with a green or a yellow, but we're going to be filling that in with some of those Nouveau drops. Okay, now if you want to use your blender pen for the pine cones, you certainly can that I mentioned, or you can use a water brush. I think I forgot to pull that out at the beginning as well. But what we're going to do, we just want to fill in the pine cones very lightly so they don't look white. But that's all the color that I'm going to be adding there. So I'm going to just take, I think I want to use the water brush actually. So I'm just going to get this just a little bit wet. And I'm just dabbing in just a little bit of the color, not squeezing any out. And that's just going to make this look a little bit richer and tied together. And we've got some up here. And if you want to add more coloring to this or add some of those drop shadows that I've shown before in videos with this frame, then by all means. I'm just trying to keep this one very simple today. And then what I think I'm going to do is I am going to take this blender pen and I'm going to fill in some of these berries. And that way we're gonna make just some of the berries dimensional and others not. So I just like those, those different levels that it's gonna create. So I'm just dabbing in the red velvet to match those leaves. So I love how you can use the blender pen like a marker with your pads when you need to do just a little bit of color and you don't have a coordinating marker. Okay, and then I'm going to adhere this to, oh, 
Ah, I got a little bit on there. So let me grab, let me see if I have my sand eraser handy. Again, I'm just struggling today with my finger. So this is the mono sand eraser. And I'm using this on the white layering weight, pure luxury. And the amount of effort that you have to apply, it kind of just depends on how much ink you have on, what kind of ink you use. But as you can see, that ink is gone. So I'm so glad that I don't have to worry about that. Otherwise, though, I would have tried to just go on and cover that with my greeting. So I'm going to use greetings here from the Festive Frame set. Let me go ahead and just adhere this, though, really quickly. Hopefully I can get through the rest of the video without transferring more ink onto it. So as you can see, this frame can be used portrait or landscape style. And you can decide whether you want the larger port of the poinsettia to be at the top or at the bottom. I think I'm going to do it this way. And then I'll pick a greeting that I can orient for my landscape card. So I did celebrate the beauty of the season, which works either way. I think on this one, I'll do the We Wish You a Merry Christmas. And then there's also as a separate image and a Happy New Year that you can put inside. So I'm gonna do this in the brown. You might wanna use the red though if you wanna put a little bit more red onto this card. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some sentiments to the inside of the card. And I want to do my Nouveau Drops last because those are going to need just a little bit of time to dry. So I'm going to do the sentiment. May the spirit of Christmas bring you peace, the gladness of Christmas bring you hope, and the warmth of Christmas bring you love. So put that right inside. And if you want, you could stamp up the inside of this card with those poinsettias to really bring that design inside. And then finally, one thing I did on the other card, I just have this nice little flourish that you can add above and below your greetings, or you could even put it on the back of your card design. So I would just put my name and then the year above that. So I like having little images and sets that I can use that way. All right, so let's go ahead and get our Nouveau Drops on here, and then I'll show you the inside of the other card. So this one is a brighter red, and this one is more of a cranberry. So I'm going to use a little bit of both. And sometimes you might want to just do a little bit just in case there's a lot of air and it squirts out so that you can have a nice perfect circle for your first one. And there's already little circles in the middle and you can make these the same size or larger. But that's just giving you a guide where to put them. And then I'm going to put just a few on the berries at the corners. You want to make sure you don't drag your hand over it. So you might want to work, if you're right-handed, work left to right, which is not what I did, but it's a nice way to, to make sure that you don't. And then let's take this darker one. And if you want to, you can also put some of these around that grating if you want something more inside that frame. Again, I was trying to keep this really simple, but I just love using pink and red at the holidays. They don't look that different probably on the video, but it is giving some nice dimension with these two tones. And they dry, I've found, a little bit darker. So you keep that in mind. Put one right here. And that's it. So let me show you the inside of this card. So on this one, and these are dry now, so it doesn't take very long, especially when you have smaller dots. Obviously, a larger one is going to take longer to dry. So I have the same one that I had inside here, but then I added the We Wish You a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And you can just sign it right there. 
So I love these cards. You have a lot of other opportunities. If you want to add ribbon, you could put those around the edges. I've also got a coordinating die set for these A Year of Flowers images. If you wanted to pop up those um, bold direct to stamp images that I did with the poinsettia and this candy cane technique. And I'm going to also be doing a variation of this design for our Friday fun day on stamp TV this week, not with a direct stamp technique, but not with the swiping images. So, or the swiping edges of that ink pad. So I hope you will check that out this Friday. Please visit us at hands, head and heart and stamp TV. I really hope you got a lot of inspiration from this particular card. Please let me know in the comments if you like the portrait or the landscape style layout better. And I really hope that you will like it and share it. Please become a subscriber. Thanks for watching today. God bless.